Today we're going to paint a lemon, so go get one and I'll wait a second. All right, to paint a lemon, we're going to look at why it's important not to be a matchy-matchy painter. And lemon is just the device to do that. So let's get started. So there's our lonely lemon, but it's well lit so you can see the different shadow shapes on it. And we're going to paint the lemon three times. There are an infinite variety of ways you could paint this lemon. Three is only scratching the surface. But I kind of wanted to talk through these three ways so you could start to think in your head about different ways you would solve this problem. I'm showing a number 10 uh, red uh, flat brush and a number 10 round brush. I'm going to use the number 10 round brush for this. It's a Kalinsky sable. The paper is rough arsh paper and here come the paints. Uh, cadmium yellow is medium is the first and there's a dab of it so we can see it. I tip it a little bit by adding some rose to it that's going to make it a little bit darker but that was too dark so I added more yellow to it and ended up with the second dab. So we have a yellow dab and an orange dab and I'm going to need something that's darker than that. So let's see what I come up with. I'm over there furiously mixing. Ah, I see what I did. So what I did was I took a cerulean blue, um, a cadmium yellow, and a rose. Now, anytime you have a red, a yellow, and a blue, and you mix them together, you're going to end up with either a gray or a brown. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you that I use those three colors. I watered them down somewhat, but I'm going to make a neutral out of that. And it's either going to be a gray or a brown. There it is. It's a gray. So I'll say it again. Anytime you have three primary colors and you mix them together, you will end up with a neutral. They neutralize each other. That's why if you look down at your palette, oh, I won't go into that. We'll talk about that another time. I felt that gray was too gray and that I needed something lighter. So I added some yellow to my mix and I ended up with a, um, a yellow toned neutral that I'm going to use instead. So now we're going to get to the lemon. So I'm using three colors, that yellow, the orange, and then that neutral, I would say it's almost like a tan. Those are the three colors I'm using to paint this lemon. And the number 10 round brush is fully loaded. And there we go. Whoop. <laughs> oh, the bottom of the form got a little bit of a belly. But this is about color mixing, not about accuracy of painting the lemon necessarily. All right, I'm going to dry everything and probably do a second pass. But I, I just did this, and I already don't remember what I did. So I'm just watching it along with you, and we'll see what happens. Okay, I feel it. Okay, it's dry. All right, underneath the lemon, I have some cerulean blue, a little bit of rose, and I'm going to drop in a spot or two of yellow for that shadow. And I'm giving that a second coat up above. So that's one way to paint a lemon. Now the reason I used cerulean and rose for that shadow was because I had used them, if you remember, I used them in the mix to make the neutral. So I did all, um, so I'm not adding any new colors when I add those colors in the shadow. I've used them in the mixes already. All right, so that's lemon number one. Let's go on to lemon number two. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit more warmed up. I thought about changing where the lemon was, and then I thought, no, you already drew it. Keep it where it is. All right, so here is lemon number two. Cadmium yellow is going in. Again, um, a bit of an orange as it gets a little bit darker. But this time what I did is I put in, I tipped, instead of tipping into a neutral, I tipped the color to become a little darker, the yellow to become a little darker by going into some reds. And you can see what happened there and then used a neutral for the dark dark part where the stem is. Again, just another way of looking how you can turn a form and use color in order to do that. And now I'll put in a shadow shape underneath. I think that lemon looks rounder than the first one, um, which might have been my color choices, might have been my brush stroking, probably has something to do with leaving the white hot highlight in there as well. I'm a little happier with lemon number two. You can probably see it's more vibrant. It's not as dulled down. That's because I didn't use any new, uh, well, I, I used the tan neutral in it. All right, lemon number three. I think this is going to be the lemon that I prefer. So let's see what happens in lemon number three. <laughs> ah, okay. 
Lemon number three is going to be cadmium yellow and using violet, its opposite, in order to make a neutral. Which, and then cadmium yellow again. I'm trying to decide what colors to use here. That's what these test tabs are for. All right, so what I decided on is the bottom row. See how it's just brighter, kind of blends in better, nicer to the eye? That's cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow with a little bit of rose added to it for that orange, and then staying really light, just adding a tiny, tiny bit of a violet in order to create the rounded form. So you can see there's almost no neutral in there. And now we'll do the shadow using rose because I already used rose in my selection there. I circled the three. Those are the three I used to make lemon number three, which I think is the more vibrant, um, brighter yellow. I also like how um, at the foot of it, it blends into the shadow. I don't like it when forms abruptly end and another form begins. Everything is kind of connected, and I, I like to do that. I use the neutral again just to delineate a little bit more of that because you, you can see how strong that shadow is when you look at the lemon. But I'm going to soften the edges. All right, starting to do a little bit of futzing around, which you don't want to do as a painter. <laughs> I like things fresher if I can have them be fresher. All right, lemon number three. Uh, I stand by that lemon. It's a rounded kind of lemon and adding some more yellow to just pump up the brightness. Now let's now we're going to go back to lemon number one. And I'm going to show you what happens if I match the colors, because that's kind of what I was doing in lemon number one to begin with. If you look at the lemon on the table, now I'm going to absolutely match the colors of the lemon the way you see them on the table. And this is what people do when they're matching photographs, when they're matching the color to the photograph. I call that being a matchy matchy painter. And then I want you to look at them and decide for yourself which lemon of the lemons that I painted, which ones do you think are the more successful lemons? Because underneath that shadow on the right hand side is a lemon that's on a gray table and so it leaves a gray shadow. And so you can see it's really not a very attractive lemon. So this is a demonstration in how you can decide whether you want to be a matchy matchy painter or whether you want to mix colors with their um, complementary colors, I mean across the color wheel, or whether you want to bend color by mixing around the color wheel. All those things are at your disposal. Remember, if you can, to keep your palette limited so that everything sort of goes. All right, uh, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. If you have any questions, please ask them because I love to answer them, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.